Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. James gives Tracy a hard time. Sunny gives Natalia something to ponder about. And Brooke Lynn talks Chase out of a precipice today on General Hospital. At the door of the Quartermain stables, Tracy watches as Cody shows James how to lasso. Cody replies that they ought to go check on her sick thoroughbred when she comes in. He gets reprimanded by Tracy for not always knowing the state of every horse. Since Cody's friend is in the hospital, Tracy ought to be considerate of him. James chastises her for being cruel. James says that's why he's here, to lift Cody's spirits. Tracy visited Dante recently to see how he was doing and believes that implies he's a really nice friend. Following the horse's checkup, Cody assigns James the task of sweeping the stable. Tracy observes that both James and Leo appear to like him. Although he hopes they don't view him as a role model, he claims that most children like him. Why is James so devoted to him, she wonders. James, Cody adds, resolved to come hang around and help him every day he could after hearing him call the hospital about Dante. Cody teaches James to ride. James yells, help, out of nowhere. James stumbled and spilled a pail of oats while attempting to bring it to the horses. They can just pick them up and put them back in the bucket, according to Cody. James queries Tracy's decision to leave them to clean up as she declines to assist. I am the boss, she says. A good boss, James reminds her, should be ready to handle whatever that their staff members do. He claims his grandpa Mac taught him that, which shocks Tracy, who then wonders whether Cody taught him. Asking if she's going to be a nasty boss or a helper, he hands her a broom. After everything is tidy, James informs Tracy that she makes an excellent boss after all. Is there anything else Tracy's grandfather Mac can impart? You need to be one if you want to have a good friend, he explains. Tracy invites them both to come have hot chocolate at the house. When Brooke Lynn returns home, Chase is crying and clutching his badge. When he saw Dante today, nothing had changed. She reassures him that he was following protocol and that he has no idea what would have happened if he had accompanied Dante in his pursuit of the suspects, despite his feelings of guilt. Is it time for him to retire from the police force? After suggesting that he return to singing, Brooke Lynn starts preparing for his major comeback right away. Chase is skilled at what she does. He wants to be a police officer, not a singer. And he's a damn good one, too, she admits. She tells him he respects the rules and works to see justice done, rather than just putting blame on others. Brooke Lynn goes into detail about how she discovered that John Cates had been questioning Danny without an adult present. Although it doesn't appear like Agent Cates, Chase says that's not acceptable either. She claims to have threatened to litigate Cates into oblivion and confiscate his badge if he did anything similar ever again. Threatening a federal agent is considered a federal offense, according to Chase. He advises that going forward, she tries to express herself more politely rather than in a menacing manner. Nevertheless, he would have cherished witnessing her give him the kind of hard kisses that only come from a fiery, passionate woman. At Cafe Sherry, Molly meets her mother. Alexis discloses that Diane may be able to regain her law license by discovering a legal loophole. She notes that among the many things working in Diane's favor are the fact that she never went to a hearing and never filed an appeal. Wow, exclaims Molly. After saying wow, Alexis asks if she has anything else to add. Molly advises her against it. Alexis assumed Molly would spearhead the effort to back her. As an accomplished lawyer, Molly advises you to pursue this if it were just for the benefit of your career or the law. She does, nonetheless, prefer her mom sober. She claims that she was disbarred the previous time she fell off the wagon, and she is concerned about what might occur if things don't work out. Why put oneself through that when there's not much chance? According to Alexis, she experienced a burst of energy, as if Diane had revived her when Diane made this suggestion. What if something goes wrong, Molly wonders? While Alexis claims she'll move on, 
she has to seize the opportunity to return to what she loves most. While Molly promises to be there for her mother through everything, she does ask that during the waiting period, her mother keep an eye on herself and attend meetings. Alexis swears she will adhere to the plan and not miss any meetings. Additionally, Molly requests that you guarantee her that she won't drink if this doesn't work out. Although she can't make that commitment, Alexis promises she will do all in her power to keep it from happening. Molly is aware that no rehabilitation is certain and that abstaining from alcohol must be a decision she makes, not a mandate. Molly sobs, saying that she needs her mother desperately right now because Christina is expecting. She is reassured by Alexis that she has her mother. Natalia apologizes to Sunny for oversharing while Christina is on the phone at Charlie's. She spoke something to Christina that Sunny believes was courageous. Despite the difficulties of parenthood, Natalia adores her daughter and wants to be there for her. Blaze is a star, according to Sunny, who has seen her perform. Natalia claims that although Allison had talent from the minute she took the stage, she didn't have a business sense, therefore she ended up working as her accounts manager. She believes that she ought to have shielded her from Link, though. Sunny explains to her that she was unable to act based on knowledge that she lacked. She believes she ought to have recognized the problem and put an end to it. Sunny reveals to Natalia that Christina experienced some difficult times as a child and that she grew even more irrational and uncontrollably unstable when he and her mother attempted to shield her. He now understands that all he can do is help his daughter to be able to make the decisions she needs to make on her own. Sunny believes that telling their children they love them is the most crucial thing. When Christina comes back, she asks Natalia if she needs to talk about anything else. Natalia came to Christina first to beg for assistance with Allison, but she has since realized that she must handle this on her own. As Natalia walks away, Christina questions whether she should text Ali about it or keep her distance. In the end, she decides that she will tell Ali about her mother's visit if she brings up the subject. What is her opinion of Natalia? Sunny asks. He concurs when Christina commends her for reaching out. They discuss her own coming out and how Sunny has always encouraged her, despite her inner fear that he wouldn't. John receives a bottle of wine from Anna when she gets to his room at the Metro Court. She informs John that although she was being gentle with Sunny, he was correct and that she can now plainly see him. She apologizes to him for calling him unprofessional and bringing up Sunny during their toast and drink. He acknowledges that he hasn't always been professional with Sunny, and that he gets under his skin. Despite her insistence that Sunny is more than the combination of his parts, Anna claims she has only seen him in the light she had hoped to. She is aware of his true nature and his propensity for violence. John queries why it took her thus long. She regrets that she was absent when Stone was close to death and Robin was given an HIV diagnosis. Her adolescent daughter was out there blowing in the wind, while Sunny was there for Robin, grieving the loss of her first great love and facing what at the time was a death sentence. For Stone, Sunny was more of a brother than he was, and John claims he'll never get it, which is one of the reasons he despises Sunny. Anna understands that she convinced herself that Sunny was a better man than he actually is, allowing her perspective of him to be influenced by Robin's opinion of him, as well as her own guilt. She has extended an allowance of doubt to him, but not any further. He worries about her safety returning home as she takes another sip from her glass. She claims to only be two stories above him. John, who is currently doing his best to protect the son of a bitch, hopes Anna can eventually take Sunny out while they continue to drink. He claims that in order to stop the person who is pursuing him, he needs to find out why. She calls him an excellent cop, to which he replies, Not today, I'm not. He tells how a woman intervened and reprimanded him after he questioned Danny Morgan today in the absence of a parent. He says this woman had a New York accent, but she thinks he met Tracy. According to Anna, that would be Brooke Lynn, her grandchild. At her name, John chuckles. He claims Brooke Lynn made him realize he had gone too far. Anna says at least he acknowledged his error. 
It wasn't John's best day as a cop, and he is still disappointed with himself. Saying that it wasn't hers either, Anna and she raise a glass to tomorrow being better. Valentin meets at the invader with Nina. She invited Alexis to join them, but Alexis turned her down. In addition, she claims that Alexis is delaying publishing the gossip columns until Friday, by which time it would all be outdated. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.